Sicilian historian Enzo Bernabà, whom I met when I was doing research at the French Italian border, has been particularly committed to promoting and preserving the historical relevance of the death pass. Bernabà has written books and participated in TV shows to recall the importance of the death pass in the history of Italian emigration, and he has also been promoting measures to secure the death pass, trying to avoid further accidents. So if you think about it, about 250 people died trying to cross that, that path, uh, that pass, I want to say in the last uh, maybe seven, 70 years. He has been collecting the traces of migrant passages on this trail, such as this list of European telephone contacts that I can show you. And uh, this directive, and this directive uh, to leave the French soil that migrants must have lost during the crossing. Material traces of migrants on the death pass trail, on the death pass trail abound, and they're particularly easy to be found in the summertime. While in Grimaldi, Bernabà also gave me directions to see Casegina, the ruins of old houses abandoned since 1944, which passers have since used to conceal migrants. And you, see, you can see pictures that I also, that I also uh, took while I was there. The location of these ruins overlooking the sea uh, the trash and the graffiti that migrants leave make of this site a kind of monument of illegal border crossing. The graffiti in particular is a heterogeneous ensemble of text, prayers, obscene drawings, love messages written in many languages during many waves of migration occurring at least since the 80s. So because of this graffiti, we can actually figure out when these migrants passed and, and left their mark. So for example, here it's pretty evident it's 19, 1997. I personally was able to, to read uh, dates at least since the 80s. Um, as you can see in this last picture, uh, the curse mort au passeur, uh, so it's here and here, is repeated twice in Arabic. Uh, sorry, it's repeated twice in French, among uh, many texts in Arabic. Rumors among locals connect these curses to a pedophile passeur operating in the area many years ago. Another graffiti in Arabic reporting the death of more than 250 victims during the tragic shipwreck in the Mediterranean of October 11th, 2013, which you can see, see here, leads to the next narrative in my analysis, the documentary Io sto con la sposa, On the Bright Side, by Gabriele Del Grande, Khaled Suleiman al Naziri, and Antonio Augugliaro from uh, 2014, to which Barnaba contributed as the guide to the death pass. Io sto con la sposa is the, fruitful, uh, is the fruit of a successful fundraising campaign. With the contribution of almost 2,500 donors, Del Grande and his co-directors reached a budget of uh, 98,000 euros and succeeded in presenting the film at the Venice Film Festival. Yostoko La Sposa narrates a real act of political dissent. A group of European activists becomes the cortege of a fake marriage between Syrian-German activist Tasnid Fared and Syrian asylum seeker Abdallah Salam. Along with the Europeans, another four Syrian asylum seekers join the group. The wedding is a ruse that will, that will eventually allow the migrants to reach Sweden, where they wish to claim political asylum. The film focuses on the Syrian diaspora caused by the war that Del Grande was able to witness in person as a journalist. It unfolds by superimposing two different narratives, one related to the migrants' lives, their past, and their hopes for the future, and the other one nar narrating the journey that takes the cortege from Milan to Stockholm. As Del Grande explains, the goal of the film is to express what he calls a new aesthetics of the border, that may humanize the migrants without necessarily transforming them into victims and objects of pity. 
while the film narrates the horror of war and the escape to Europe, insisting on the Syrians' emotions, their memories and fears, it challenges the presumptions that these people are not able to be happy or celebrate and live, and live their lives to the fullest. Being protagonists of the film, with their own hopes and desires, the Syrian asylum seekers are made equal to the European subjects who decide to share the risks taken along their journey to Sweden. The film's narrative is about a new possible subjectivity, a new we, celebrating the strength of a confident anti-racist solidarity. Yo Soko Las Pause is a deeply transnational film for the engagement of a multilingual, diverse crew and for representing a journey across different borders of Europe. From Italy to France, from France to Germany, passing through Luxembourg, from Germany to Denmark, and from Denmark to Sweden. Yet the French-Italian border is prominent in the film. Not only is it the first border to be crossed, but it is also the history of this borderland that comes out most strongly and has an important role in the conception of this film. After choosing the wedding dress and having their hair cut, the group of asylum seekers meet the other components of the group in a private house in Milan. There, Del Grande and Al Naziri introduce themselves and explain the rationale behind their project. They have a map in front of them to study the first part of their journey from Milan to Marseille. Del Grande explains that they will pass through the old border, and he says uh, that border is a, continue, a mountain passage used by Italians where they still used to travel without a passport. 50 years ago, the illegal Im immigrants to France were Italians. That path still exists today, end of quote. The path that Grande refers to is indeed the death pass above Ventimiglia. It takes them several hours to cut a hole in the, in the barbed wire dividing the two countries and make it across the border. This image is so evocative that it was chosen to promote the film while a picture of the same crossing also appears on the official poster. The graffiti on the 2013 shipwreck that Abdallah Salam writes during the shooting leaves a permanent mark of the crew stop at Kasejina that you can see uh, on the picture that I showed earlier. The history of the French-Italian border and of Italian illegal immigration into France is important in triggering the identification process on which Del Grande and Al Naziri ground their act of solidarity. They, too, explain how they strongly oppose the deeds of untrustworthy passeurs who tricked their migrants, abandoning them in remote areas of the Alps after receiving their money. This kind of fraud is so common that it is, in fact, what motivated the directors to make this film. The grandest condemnation of opportunistic and treacherous passeurs is very similar to Biamonti's critique, and to Pietro Germis. Yet, in contrasting good and bad passer, Yusuko Lasposa takes on a playful tone as if being masqueraded as attendants of a wedding uh, party allowed the participants to treat their mission with a degree of amusement as well as with determination. In representing the passer of Yusuko Lasposa as humane European citizens, the film also clearly implies that the only way to stop the bloodbath in the Mediterranean Sea is for Europe to offer concrete legal alternatives of mobility to people escaping from war. <laughs> 